Hello, welcome to Financial Insider Weekly. I'm your host, Michael Gray, CPA. My guest today is Mark Erickson, who is a family law attorney, and his firm is located in Campbell, California. He graduated with a JD from uh, Santa Clara University School of Law in 1979. He was admitted to the California State Bar and U.S. District Court, Northern District of California in 1979. And after working for another attorney, mostly in the areas of civil and business litigation from 1979 through 1984, he founded his own law firm in 1985. He became a certified family law specialist by the Board of Legal Specialization of the State Bar of California in 1987. He has lectured and presented seminars for many groups, including as a teaching assistant and guest lecturer at the Santa Clara University School of Law. And uh, I found out that uh, Mark is also a hockey player, and so he's played on some uh, amateur hockey teams. So today, uh, Mark and I are going to be talking about what I call Divorce California Style. <laughs> and uh, related to the basics. So we're gonna talk about some basics related to divorce. And I wanna give you a caution here because Mark is a California attorney. I am a California CPA. So uh, if you are watching uh, from another state, uh, the rules may be a little different from state to state. And also we're talking about legal issues and so uh, this is just the beginning of a conversation that you should be having with your own attorney. But we hope we sort of give an introduction to this area. So, Mark, thanks a lot for joining me today. Thank you for having me. That's uh, a pleasure. Okay. So, um, how does this divorce process get started? Well, <clears throat> starting it uh, in the court mm -hmm. system is, is not very difficult. I mm -hmm. think a lot of people go through a lot before they make that decision and yes. actually formally start the process. Mm -hmm. But the process is fairly easy. It started by one spouse or the other filing what's called a petition, mm -hmm. usually a petition for dissolution of marriage. Everyone always hears in the news that some celebrity when they get divorced has cited irreconcilable differences. Yes. And that's the normal basis for someone asking for a dissolution of marriage. And, uh, California. So uh, it's as easy as filling out a front and back preprinted form with names, uh, date of marriage, date of separation, uh, names and birth dates of children, and checking a few boxes. Um, so the actual filing process is pretty simple, and uh, there's a filing fee. And uh, in Santa Clara County, you also check a box that indicates what your zip code is, which determines which of three courthouses you're assigned to. Okay. Now, um, related to this, in California, we have, I guess what we call a no-fault system? Yes, we do have a no-fault system, and that's what the irre irreconcilable differences is about, is either spouse uh, can say that they have irreconcilable differences that have led to the irremediable breakdown of the marriage, and that's sufficient for the court to terminate marital status. Um, so you don't have to prove anybody did anything wrong. It's just, our marriage isn't working, I want to end it. That's enough. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's a six month waiting period from the time the respondent, the person who served with the petition, six months from that time, is the earliest date you can terminate marital status based on irreconcilable differences, uh, although it may take longer than that. Okay. When is the right time to file for a divorce? <laughs> uh, uh, it, it may depend on the people's mm. circumstances. I think yes. generally the right time is probably when someone decides their marriage really is over that they aren't, they've given up on the concept of reconciliation, maybe they've tried marriage counseling or whatever uh, they think they need to do to determine whether their marriage is truly over. Um, I, I suppose there may be some strategies sometimes in terms of timing for some people. They may think about issues relating to children. Um, it's not uncommon for someone to want to wait perhaps until children have finished the school year. 
Um, I think a lot of people stay in marriages that are effectively over for many years, waiting for their children to finish high school. Yeah. Very common time to see a divorce uh, commence is when the youngest child graduates from high school or some event related to a child uh, becoming more independent. There can be some financial considerations. Um, uh, the date people separate, called the date of separation, is a very important date in a dissolution of marriage because it determines when income earned by a spouse is no longer community property. Earnings and accumulations uh, on those earnings from someone's time, skill, and effort during the marriage are community property. Once you separate, they become your separate property. Uh -huh. so, so the timing of when people separate can have uh, consequences in terms of acquisition of community property. The same is true for debts. Debts generally up to the date of separation or community. After separation, they're the separate debt of the spouse who incurs them. And then various reimbursement claims may start to accumulate between the parties once they separate. So making a decision as to when you do it may have consequences. The same, a bonus might be received before or after separation. Uh, once you separate, you no longer accumulate an interest in your spouse's uh, retirement plan or if they're putting money in a 401k plan after separation, that becomes separate property. So uh, some people really think these, th these issues through and for other it's often just an emotional response. My marriage is over, I want to get the process started. Right. Is there a difference uh, between men and women as far as their approach to this issue of when is the time to follow? What, what are they going to do in this process? How do they go about it? Uh, I've been doing this for 30 years, and, and so I've had a lot of initial consultations with men and women that are thinking about a divorce. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there are some differences in the way, some gender differences in the approach as to when to file or how to start the process. Um, I find that men, particularly more successful men, entrepreneurial men, uh, leaders of industry, um, tend to not want to file. And, mm -hmm. and I've had men come back and see me again every six months or every several years and never file. Uh -huh. uh, whereas I find women tend to be more decisive and I, I think often when a woman comes in for an initial consultation, they've already made their mind up, they're ready to start the process and, and file paperwork, whereas men usually are thinking about it. So men are seeking information uh, in the process of thinking the matter through, but women pretty much they've already decided and now, okay, what do we do? I'm ready to go. <laughs> I, I, yeah, that, it's some tendency, not that, that, that women aren't interested in uh, the, the significance of it and they aren't exploring and trying to learn about it. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think in terms of emotionally, or, or at least in terms of determining whether the marriage is over, when women come in more often, they are ready to, to start the process. Okay. All right, well, what do you find to be the most difficult area when you're handling one of these divorce cases? 